Hello everyone, Toxic49B here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Battleshell Windows Trojan. Uh, been a while since I've done anything with voice narration, but for the purposes of showing this Trojan, I figured it'd be better than just pointing OBS at a VM and expecting you to figure out what was going on. Before we take a look at Battleshell, let's go ahead and take a look at this VM and just make sure everything's in good working order. You can see we got Explorer here, we got all the files in the Windows folder, or in the WinNT folder. Uh, System32 looks fine, so I think the VM is good to go. Uh, let's go take a look at Battleshell itself. And if we take a look at the executable, you can see it's actually pretty small. Uh, it's only 7,680 bytes long, which is pretty on the small side for malware. And if we run it, you can see we get an application cannot be run in Win32 mode. Now, the reason for this is that Battleshell is actually what is known as a native executable. Uh, you may have seen native executables before in the form of something like CheckDisk, where before Windows loads, the CheckDisk program uh, scans the disk for errors. Or maybe you've had an antivirus program where it scans files right before Windows loads. And essentially what's happening there is that the native executables are basically special executables that run after the Windows NT kernel has loaded, but before the Win32 subsystem has loaded. And this basically gives it full control over the system while still providing it access to the core Windows API. And Battleshell here is a native executable, and it takes advantage of this mode to allow it to do its nefarious activities. So let's go ahead and install Battleshell to the system. You can see we just have a very basic bat script, copies it to the system, and then puts a registry key in to run it at uh, the next boot. Go ahead and run it here, and nothing happens right now, of course, but if we go ahead and reboot the computer, we can see Battleshell activate its payload. So we get a very obnoxious alarm, and we got some text here. You can see it says, Microsoft Windows has detected that the user of this personal computer is attempting to regain control of the system. In order to proceed, you must defeat me in a game of Battleshell. Failure to do so will result in unfavorable outcomes for you. And we got a warning, do not turn off your computer, and some basic instructions on how to play. And if you couldn't gather just from the instructions, uh, this is a clone of the game Battleship. Uh, where instead of syncing battleships, you're syncing cores. Uh, and the goal here is to beat the computer at the game of battleship in order to win. Now, there's no separate AI. Basically how it works is we go ahead and hit the uh, pound key here to take a look at the game board. You can see it prints a nice little ASCII representation of the board. And if we type in a coordinate pair like A0, you can see it says miss and has 47 shots remaining. So the goal of the game is to basically find all of the battleships on the board uh, in the limited number of shots that we have. If we go ahead and print out the board now, you can see that it places an O where there is a miss, and it places an X whenever you hit something. If we type A0 again, you can see it just says error you've already shot there, and it doesn't actually decrement your shot count because I'm not a total asshole. Let's go ahead and up and again, and let's just go across diagonally. That usually seems to work pretty well uh, for this game. So that would be um, A0, B1, uh, A, C, 2, D, 3. Okay, so you have a hit on D3. Go and print the board, and you can see you have an X in the uh, position where D3 is. Um, let's see, let me just guess that it is a horizontal ship. Let's try E3, why not? And it does work. Let's try F3. A miss. Okay. Um, let's try C3. Okay, we got hit. And B3. And you can see we get a little chime. A message that the core was destroyed and how many shots have remaining. So that was the four shot ship there. Let's just keep going down the uh, diagonal line here. So A, B, C, D, E. I think that's E4. Check. Okay, that's E4. Yeah, F5. G6. Okay, I have a hit on G6. Very good. Um, let's try. Let's just try G5. Okay, it's a miss. Let's try. Let's try H6. I6. J6, miss, okay. Um, now it's obviously a horizontal ship. Uh, let's try F6, E6. Oh, E6, my bad. There we go. Okay, 
So we've hit the two largest battleships. Now we got to find the smaller ones here. Uh, let's just keep going down the diagonal line here. Um, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, H, let's try H, 7, H, 7, I believe. Hit, another hit. Okay, well, we're getting pretty lucky today. Now, the ship placement is completely random. It's basically based on the system time, and uh, it does place the ships either horizontally and vertically, so hopefully we'll find a vertical ship in here so I can demonstrate that. But, let's see. Do you have a hit here on... H7. Let's try... I'm assuming it's horizontal because it's on the same plane. Let's try... Uh, G7. Okay. F7. Nice. Okay. Alrighty. So we found a three hitter. So now it's going to be down to the three hit and a two hit. And considering how much of the board is left, it's probably going to be a bit difficult, but we'll give it a shot anyway. Um, let's just finish up the diagonal line here. Uh, I... H, J, okay. So across the whole board, we found three ships, which is actually pretty good for a start. But now I gotta find the rest of these ships here. So let's go ahead and do a line in the other direction. Let's go A, nine, B, eight, C, seven, D, six, B, five, F, four. Oh, got a hit on G3. Okay, let's go... Let's try 4, because it's all but horizontal so far. Let's try Horda. G3. Um, H3? No, miss. It has to be vertical. I'm going to guess it's going up. Just as a hunch. Let's try G2. G1. Okay, got the 3 hit ship. Okay. Uh, let's keep going up the line here. So we've only got the two hitter left, but this little, that little bastard, you can't find him half the time, so we'll see how it goes. We have 16 shots, which is not too terrible, but let's try some more here. Um, okay. Let's try G3, I think G2. I've already shot there. Okay. H2. I1, J0. Okay. So I've kind of crossed those lines. What I will probably do is do... Let's try A... Let's go in kind of the middle. A5, we'll say. Um, J3. Kind of hit the edges a little bit. And kind of work our way in from there. A, B, C, D, E, shoot, okay, D9, let's try, H9, let's try a little more on the left side, A, another layer in, why not? Um, A, B, C, D, one. Yes. Okay, getting toasty. Let's try another one. Let's try the bottom. Let's try C, eight. Oh, oh, we got some. C, eight. C, D, eight. I think... And there we go. Won the game. And prints a message here. And there you go. So you can see it says you've won. You escaped this time, but remember, I'm in your computer. And we should be able to boot into Windows now.
So we can see everything seems to boot up fine. If we go ahead to the little disk, win NT, nothing appears to be out of the ordinary. B.exe is battle shell, if you couldn't tell, but it doesn't do anything in N32 mode. So 32, pretty simple. Yeah, everything looks fine. So if you were to want to remove the infection after winning, you would just simply delete B.exe and send it to the cycle bin, but uh, we're going to go ahead and reboot again, but this time we're going to intentionally lose the game. Let's go ahead and restart. And we will see what happens when you lose Battleshell. Alrighty, we're back. Let's go ahead and just start uh, just firing in patterns that almost certainly won't win. Um, let's just try A0, A1, A2, F I A2, A4, A5, A6, A7, A8, A9. Yeah, so we're just going to go around the board in spirals because usually things don't like to land on the edge. Uh, C4. Alrighty, we should lose this time. And you can see we get the quote from Smash. Ominous ellipses, we run a chance game over, and we'll see what the Trojan has done to the system. As you can probably tell, something is not quite right. If we go ahead and click, nothing is happening. Explorer isn't loading. If we go ahead and do a Control Alt Delete, you can see Task Manager doesn't do anything. Log out, change password. Yeah. As you can see, it doesn't really want to work anymore. Yeah, so what the Trojan has done is it has deleted Explorer, CMD, and Task Manager from the system. And because it is running in native mode instead of in the Win32 subsystem, it is able to delete pretty much any file and system at once. And hence where it gets its name Battle Shell is it deletes the shell from the computer. So after this, I mean, it's not the worst thing to recover from. You could just simply find another copy of Explorer. Your files are still intact, but a bit annoying, kind of a pain in the ass. And uh, yeah, that's about it for the Battle Shell Trojan. Figured I'd finally showcase it after having it sit around on my hard drive collecting dust for this long. If you enjoyed the video, uh, leave a like and let me know what I should do next. I'm still working on a lot of other projects. I've been kind of radio silent, busy just trying to do a bunch of different stuff. Uh, I do have a lot more interesting things coming down the pipeline here, so stay tuned for some kind of cool stuff. Alright, well thank you. Catch you next time.